from Display Studios, it's Display Trivia. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Priebus and it's time to figure out how much we're playing for in tonight's trivia game. As you can see here, we have a lovely wheel. On that wheel, we have $1,000, $2,500, and $5,000. Whatever we spin is yours, my friends, if you can answer the questions correctly. Here we go. First things first, let's find out how much we're playing for. As we wait with anticipation. Here we go, it's coming, it's coming, I feel it. All right, I'll take it, we're playing for $2,500. Woo, that's what I like to see, a little money. Tomorrow, we take the training wheels off and it'll be 5,000, but for tonight, 2,500. Here's how you can play. Hang out with me, hang out right here. In just a little bit, 10 questions are gonna pop up on your screen. You gotta answer them all correctly. If you get them all right, you get a piece of that $2,500 prize. For now, stick around. We'll be right back with more Today on Display. Welcome to Display Tips. Let's get introduced to Profile. Tap the profile on bottom right of screen. Here, you can personalize your display experience. Tap the pencil icon to edit your profile picture, cover photo, basic user info, including contact, and link to your other social media accounts. Select your preferred language, identify top friends and family members. You can also create and manage your communities here. Watch for more tips on Display TV. Welcome back to Today on Display and welcome to Display Trivia. For your safety, please keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because, folks, this is going to be a wild ride. There will be ups and downs and twists and turns and you might just get wet. Okay, but seriously, push all your drinks way off to the side because if you spill on your phone or whatever mobile device you might be playing from today, that could be bad. I mean, I'm talking bag of instant rice bad. Now, earlier, we spun to determine the jackpot, which tonight is good. It's $2,500. And in case you're just tuning in, I'll re-explain the rules. You'll have 10 seconds to pick your answer and choose wisely, because once you tap, there's no going back. I imagine you're saying that with me. If you miss one, you will no longer be eligible for the cash prize, but stay in the game because you can keep playing along for fun. I told you. It's basically a free ticket to Disney World, Display World, and you don't even need to be this tall to ride. All right, you ready to do this? Here we go. Question one. A square has how many sides? One, four, 2,632. A square has how many sides? One, four, 2,632. I don't think it's fair that squares are the shape associated with nerdiness? Hey, don't be a square. Like, what did squares ever do to you? Except be the only shape that, at the same time, is a rectangle, a parallelogram, and a rhombus all rolled into one. What other shape can do that? The only other entity I know with that much range is Meryl Streep. So, like, let's be a little nicer to squares, shall we? You all are squaring off in this game tonight, and I know we're only on question one so far, but this game is shaping up real nice, real, real nice. Ready for Q2? What is the correct name for a chin with a dimple? Ridged, cleft, raised. What is the correct name for a chin with a dimple? Ridged, cleft, raised. Chin dimples are massively underrated. Second only to cheek dimples on faces and those adorable dimples that babies have all over their chunky thunder thighs. Oh my God. Real talk. If you ever feel bad about your body image, just look at some cute little babies. Literally brand new and perfect human beings. And they are majorly chonky, super chonksters. Yeah, thunder thighs for days. So what? I'm preaching all about self-love. Can you handle it? Can you love handle it? I don't think you can. Okay, chins with lovely little dimples in the middle are called cleft. Keep your chin up as we head into Q3. Which fraction represents a quarter of something? 
look at those fractions and tell me which one, okay? One over two, one over three, one over four. I don't want to give it away. What fraction represents a quarter of something? Half, a third, a fourth. There we go. Retiring to your quarters for the night is something fancy people say when they want to go to bed. It's basically a nice way of saying, hey, I don't want to be around you anymore. Go take it. Go retire to your quarters. I'll retire to my dimes or my nickels. What if I want to be alone without you, fancy people? Are you so fancy you sleep with your pinky up? Not worth it. I'll be my lazy down to earth self any day if I can sleep with all my fingers down. Thank you very much. Fingers work hard. Yeah, especially in trivia. They need their beauty sleep too. Yeah, again, especially your fingers. One fourth is the same as one quarter. That's why there are four quarters and a dollar. And you get a quarter for every person you invite that sets up a profile on display. How many dollars are gonna be in your winnings tonight? Well, we gotta keep going. Q4. All of the following are black and white animals except giant panda, macaw, zebra. All of the following are black and white animals except giant panda, macaw, zebra. I know it's not an animal, but my favorite black and white thing, you already know it, the cookie. Seriously, have you ever had these little guys? Half is dipped in chocolate frosting. Half is dipped in chocolate frosting and the other half is dipped in vanilla frosting. I mean, that is genius. I mean, why are we not doing this with more foods? Asparagus, half chocolate, half vanilla. You know, broccoli, half chocolate, half vanilla. That horrible Salisbury steak my mom used to make for us as kids, half chocolate. You know what, no, never mind. that's too far. We're getting into a gray area. Kind of like the color of those Salisbury steaks. <laughs> so let's keep things black and white. Which two of these animals are, except for the macaw? So let's fly on to question five. What is the name of the famous dance group where every member must be between 5'6 and 5'10 and a half? Chippendales, the Rockettes, Alvin Ailey. What is the name of the famous dance group where every member must be between 5'6 and 5'10 and a half? Chippendales, the Rockettes, Alvin Ailey. Dancers seem like smart people until you hear them count. It's like, and they get stuck at eight or something and they always start at five. I don't want to judge because I really can't dance, but I am I am a super good counter. Watch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Did you pick the right answer yet? I'm just trying to stall for you. Yes, I'm stalling. I didn't forget what comes after that last number, okay? I totally can count. I totally know what comes after whatever number I stopped on, which I already forget. No, I'm not going to say it because you need proof. You know what comes after it? Question six, okay? Question six. What is the real given first name of the TV presenter Bear Grylls? Edward, Michael, John. What's the real given first name of the TV presenter Bear Grylls? Edward, Michael, John. Man versus wild? Why does it always have to be a competition, Bear? Hmm? Why can't we work together? Why not man plus wild equals hearts forever? Forever's written with the number four and on a Lisa Frank binder, of course. This guy's still making these adventure shows where he tries to overcome the wild, and it's like, bear, no more toxic masculinity. Work with the wild, not against it, buddy. Have you even asked the wild if it wants to be your friend? Better yet, have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon? I thought the moon was made of cheese, not corn. Anyway, Edward Michael Grillis is his real name, and I hope he and Wild work things out because they make a beautiful couple. Question seven. The Greek letter used to show change in a variable is often represented by a symbol of what basic shape? Square, circle, triangle. What basic shape are we looking for? Square, circle, or triangle? If you went to a big state school with loads of Greek life, then you probably know this one. I have a performing arts degree, so while I can't tell you a lot about Greek letters, I can tell you a lot about being an annoying musical theater kid. Here's my number one tip. Sing all the time. Sing in rehearsal. Sing on the bus. Sing in the back seats of parents' cars on the way to the thespian competitions. And most importantly, make sure the entire cast of Grease sings We'll always be together in the middle of a Chili's on a Friday night after you've just opened your show. Trust me, the world would be better for it. 
The Greek letter we're looking for is delta, and in its uppercase form, it's a triangle. You ready to try a new angle? Q8. Fritz Haber won a Nobel Prize for fixing which element? Carbon, phosphorus, or nitrogen? Fritz Haber won a Nobel Prize for fixing which element? Carbon, phosphorus, nitrogen. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, this element wasn't broken per se, but Mr. Haber went ahead and did the thing anyway. That is what we like to call someone with initiative. Me, not so much. Oh, there are actual broken things in my apartment that I do need to fix, but am I still getting around? Yeah, I'm still getting around to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my shower's very clogged with all my hair. That just means I get to take more baths. Perspective is important. What else is important? This discovery, because it allowed us to synthesize fertilizers and feed a growing population with all the food we can now produce. And the element that these plants needed, nitrogen. Before Haber, the plants had to do all this work themselves. Sometimes all you need is a little help. I can't help yet, but I can get you started going into question nine. Which of the following accomplishments was not achieved by one of the four people whose heads can be found carved into the face of Mount Rushmore? Helped end the Great Depression? Oversaw the Louisiana Purchase? Signed the Emancipation Proclamation? The four heads on Mount Rushmore, and those accomplishments. I'm running out of voice, so I'll let you read it one more time, okay? But what about the people who carved Mount Rushmore. Like, what a feat. We need someone to memorialize them. I know, a giant stone mountain carved into the shapes of their faces. Okay, but then the people who built that are gonna need a monument. Okay, all right, yeah. So here's what we do. We keep going till everyone's faces are carved into mountains and then everyone is happy. How many mountains are there, do you think? Oh geez, I hope there's enough. How many people on earth? Oh God, eight billion? All right, I think we might run out of mountains. I don't wanna make promises I can't keep. I think most of these guys made good on their word, but the only one who isn't carved into Rushmore is FDR. No worries, we'll get him in the next one. You guys ready? It's time for the final question. Here we go, question 10. This type of delicate fabric worn in abundance by nobility in Europe in the 17th century comes from a word meaning what? Tissue, noose, royal. What's that word mean? Hmm? Tissue, noose, or royal. Not sure I can speak for this fabric or what it's made of, but I see all of you out there and I know what you're made of. Winning material. Could you become trivia nobility tonight? I mean, we stand a smart king or queen and everything in between. Even if you didn't win, even if you made it this far, you should still get a title. Trivia Duke? Trivia Lady? Burger King? I don't know, it doesn't matter to me. Whatever makes you happy. What makes me happy? Simple. My display bees taking home that prize money. We're almost ready to crown you winners, but first, the fabric is lace, which comes from the Latin for noose. You know, because of all those loops, yeah? Anyone else feeling loopy? Whoo, that was a hard one. But, winner, winner, chicken dinner! Yes, shout yourselves out in the chat. You came, you played, you slayed, you got paid.